This is Syria's reality after a decade of war. Lines outside bakeries offering subsidized bread show the deepening economic crisis, the worst since the conflict began. The local currency has crashed. It affected the price of food and basic goods. The UN says 60 percent of the population, or more than 12 million people, do not have regular access to food. The salary of a government employee is worth around $15. Many people are eating just bread and dried wheat. Meat is a luxury. There is hunger. And there is anger at the regime. But people can't do anything. Bashar al-Assad may not have recaptured every inch of Syria as he promised, but he survived the war with the help of Russia and Iran. And the Syrian president, who has been in power for more than two decades, is preparing for elections in the coming weeks before his seven-year term expires. He is ignoring calls for a UN-supervised vote, and the opposition is not surprised. The new American administration, that they didn't mention Syria at all, we saw it from the EU statement, they don't mention Syria at all. So I think he's sending the message, or he's benefiting from the message, that I'm staying as long as you, you there's no act, so why, why to give up if, the, if nobody wants to act against me? The Syrian government and its allies are under Western sanctions for their role in the war. The sanctions have stopped the flow of money needed for reconstruction in the hope Assad will agree to political reforms. But even when the balance of power was against Assad, he refused to cooperate with the UN-led peace process. Doing so would ultimately weaken his grip on power. With no settlement in sight, at least 13 million people remain in exile within and beyond Syria's borders. It's a central issue of the conflict. Many say there can't be a settlement or reconciliation with more than half of the country displaced. The Syrian government has actually put in place laws and policies that are designed to keep Syrian refugees out, or at the very least send them a message that they're not wanted there. From laws that deal with property confiscation to laws requiring asset seizures if they don't pay exorbitant amounts uh, to avoid military conscription. The front lines have been largely quiet for a year. There is a stalemate, with much of the north and northeast outside the state's control. Assad may boast about controlling two-thirds of Syria, but it's increasingly being described as a failed state with no international legitimacy. Zena Khudr al-Jazeera, Beirut.